here we are in the middle of nowhere. Apparently some random spot along the road in Joshua Tree where we're going to start this stupid hike. It's way too early in the morning. Decent people are going to work. We are not decent people. And this is kind of where we're headed, up that nondescript canyon about two miles away. Should be fun. Okay, we've reached the canyon. It's about two miles in. Somewhere out there is the truck. It's getting warm. I had to strip the pant legs off. Wouldn't have expected this for March in the desert, but it's uh, going to be 80 here today. Here's the canyon we're headed up, another two miles before the climb. It's a lot smaller than I had expected, but it's the right route. Well, there's a reason that canyon looks so small. It wasn't the right one. We missed it by a few hundred yards. I was fooled by the terrain. Should have been paying more attention to the GPS. So we've kind of come up here, snuck up this little canyon, and the big canyon is up ahead, looking the way it should have looked had I been paying attention to the stupid GPS instead of trusting my senses. Ah, anyway, onward. Well, this actually worked out better than we thought. Pete approves. This is the shortest line into the main canyon. And at this point, it's like walking on a parking lot. It's so nice that we may go back down the way we came up. And Pete's approval, you know, is everything. We've made it up the main wash a pretty good way. I think we know where we're headed, which we think is that climb there, which always looks either better or worse from a distance. So right now it looks doable. We may change our minds when we get there. But the wash is really nice, like walking on a sidewalk. Well, there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is that this thing wasn't our climb, so we had to continue further on. I need to trust the GPS more than my instincts. Apparently. The good news is that is our climb, which actually looks to be a lot of fun, especially compared to what we thought was our climb. This looks a lot more agreeable, which is probably just a mistake on our part. But, uh, Okay, just over two hours in, we've reached the base of the ascent. We'll take a break here, and Pete's going to have Snickers, which means I'm doomed. Here's our route up, and it could be I'm suffering from some kind of delirium, but it doesn't look that bad. Here's the wash continuing to the south. like tailing piles on the far side of the wash for about a third of the way up. Here's our ascent route. So far it's feeling pretty good. We came in that way and we think our ascent route is uh, going across that little saddle. We've got kind of a flat, knife edgy ridge, and the final climb up to the top up there. The uh, climb continues, and I'm out of breath. That's where we've come up from. Continuation of Washington Wash. And we're still heading up here somewhere. Don't know where, but somewhere. About probably halfway to the top by time wise. Okay, we've reached the top. It was a reasonably bad climb, but it could have been worse. Uh, we're three hours, 30 minutes in roughly, and sort of downhill. This is where we came from. It's kind of getting around. There's uh, San Gregonio way in the distance. I think. general mine area. It's relatively flat up here. The next little rise should be the center of the Ruby Lee claim, but it's hard to locate exactly. 
Uh, but actually, I see an old road right across the way right now. It's an old road scar on the far ridge. So we're going to be walking that on our way out. And then we're going to exit down into the canyon of hell that way. So it should be entertaining. This looks to be the first sign of anything, even though it's not terribly obvious. It looks like a carn because some of the rocks look like they've been piled there. It also happens to be dead center with, with my best guess of where the Ruby Lee claim lies, but it's just a guess. So I'm not too sure about the carniness of this. But best guess right now is it is. So this is where we're headed out there. And on the far ridge, you can definitely see an old road scar that we will be exiting out on. So that road should be leading to something, but I don't know what. Here's a really good view of the road scar off in the distance that we're going to follow on the way out. I'm uh, actually standing on what appears to be the access road that, although very visible on Google Earth, it's almost invisible when you're on the ground. Um, after 80 years or so, it's really overgrown. So I think I'm standing on it, and the reason I say I think so is I see linear rocks lined up here, and it continues over the rise, and it makes sense in terms of the geography. Okay, this is uh, definitely the road, although it's virtually invisible. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, there's another kind of a built-up wall. We'll be heading out that way, but for now we're going to head in the opposite direction. That way and try to follow the road and see what we can find. This is one of the better segments of the road. We've uh, followed the road as far south as we're planning to on this particular trip. I'm kind of looking as it going off to the distance. That actually is the road in, in front of me, believe it or not. And we're going to head back this way on the road that you can't see. and. Uh, we're going to see what's at the other end and start our descent. So far, not a single tin can, nothing to be seen. But maybe at the uh, end of this road we'll find something. Yeah, this is the road. Absolutely, positively. Rocks to brew it. Out on the ridge at what should be the broken hill claim, still on the remains of the road, follow the rock edging. This ridge on the far side is where the Ruby Lee claim should be, but we really didn't find any trace of it. And this is back where we came from, and you can see bits of the road. So this isn't going to go much further before it peters out, and then we'll be starting down. Okay, we're at the end of the road, and this is what we have here. Normally, we wouldn't be excited about that, but we have seen absolutely nothing here other than this. So, the question remains, is this the lost tunnel of the Ruby Lee Mine? It's dynamited shut. It doesn't look like there's a lot of tailings here. At, uh, that's the extent of it. Not even a rusty can here. This is uh, really remote and really barren of anything. No sign of a camp, a tent, no broken glass. Just this small scar. And that's it. We've uh, continued on beyond any last remnants of the road. So that's all we found of the mine site. 
really underwhelming as mine sites go, kind of looking back at the general area. The uh, good news is it's all downhill from here. The bad news is that's the downhill. I'm not sure what idiot planned this thing out, but I hope he get, gets what he deserves. So, lunch break, and then uh, a real interesting descent, I think, back down to the main canyon. We came upon what appears to be one of the corner markers for the broken hill claim, and it's such a sad state of affairs that we have now become excited about rock piles in the desert, because there is nothing else out here. And we're about to start down. We're going down right in front of us. The car happens to be in a nice spot. We're going to go over this little saddle and then drop all the way down into the canyon. And uh, again, over plan this should be beat. I think they will. Well, we just completed this little bastard of a descent, reached the saddle, and now we have our final descent, which is here. <laughs> which probably is not that bad. Because once we're down there, we're pretty much home free. Emphasis on the once we're down there part, I guess. So, down we go. This clip serves no purpose other than to show what a typical stupid hike with me is like. Consider it a public service. Don't try this at home. Don't try it at all. Yeah, this is pretty usual. Okay, this, this, this is me kissing the ground. Yes, kissing the ground. There's where we came from. It was a bastard. Here we are. Pete thought it was fun. And now we just have a relatively flat, sandy path out of here. So we may cheat death on this trip. That ridge off in the distance is the one we ascended on. So we're pretty much down. We just have to go the five miles back to the vehicle. Oh, not a problem after this. Okay, we're both flat on our asses back in the main wash, which is as hard as concrete. So it's an easy downhill run. Here's where we came from, which we will not go back to. And that's just about the end of this trip, other than the five miles we still have to go. That uh, white dot out there is the truck. The unusual thing is it's been looking like that for the last half hour or 45 minutes. For some reason, it's not getting any closer. See? See? I told you we've been walking more and it's still not closer. Something's wreaking havoc with the time-space continuum, I think. Well, the truck seems to have stopped receding. Pete's running like crazy to get the hell out of here. Shadows are getting long. The GPS is giggling hysterically at around 13 and a half miles. So, what have we learned? What can we take away from today's little adventure? Really, it's not worth it. There's nothing to see at the Ruby Lee Mine. It is not worth the hike. Don't do it. Don't be stupid. Don't be an idiot. Don't go to the Ruby Lee. We did it, so you don't have to. That's why we do most of the things we do. Giving our sanity so others can hold on to theirs.